Yeah, we're live. <laughs> okay, we're live. I'm sorry. My computer is like, no. Oh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. This is another episode of, we're going to just call it Loki spoiler cast at this point, where we sit down, we watch the episode, we break down, give us our give you our thoughts on what we thought of Loki episode three. What is this, Lamentus? Where we are on Planet Lamentus. So I am your host, Dana Abercrombie. I am joined by Mr. Carlos Romero. Hey, 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 what's going on, everyone? Mr. Joey Polanco. Hey, everybody. Mr. Richard Negron. Hey, what's up, everyone? Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And Joey's father, Tony Polanco. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Illegitimate child, you know. What is going on, people? What is going on indeed? So in episode three, we ended up with Loki and Sylvie. They ended up on Lamentus. This is a purple kind of tinged moon planet on planet Lamentus, which is breaking apart and is threatening the swift destruction of the planet. Uh, now, the planet and the moons, really quick thing, that from episode three, those who don't know, it's located at the very edge of the Kree space. So for a little Marvel history, we had some possible Kree action, maybe not, I'm just being hopeful. Um, so this is takes place around, I think it's 2077, where this is, they're gonna be completely annihilated. And Loki and Sylvie, they accidentally end up being transported after they're trying to escape from Judge Rinsayer and her hunters. So you saw them like trying to fight them off and you, uh, what was it, Sylvie was running around killing some and then beating some up. It was really, you know, I thought something great was gonna happen, but it didn't. Anyway, so <laughs> from there, the, the rest of the episode is kind of spent on Lamentus One, where they attempt to escape the planet before the destruction. And they end up getting on this basically snow piercer kind of train mm -hmm. where yeah. it's supposed to lead off into this rocket and get them off of the planet. And everything ends up failing. They end up on the on the train after kind of what was it? The copying, pretending to be one of the soldiers. They get in. Loki kind of let his guard down, and he's completely drunk. Sylvie, she falls asleep, and then this things just go completely awry from there. And it seems that at the very end of the episode, they're trapped because we end up watching that the rocket that was supposed to get everyone off the planet is basically just blown up. So everyone's just stuck there. So it just seems like now that what they're going to try to do is figure out a way to stop Lamentus from complete annihilation. So that can also be about what will happen if we stop what it's supposed to be from being and how that can affect the multiverse as a whole and, and everyone else going forward. So real quick thoughts, what did everyone think? Mr. Tony Polanco, I know you was excited. Yeah. <laughs> Like I keep saying, like <laughs> at this point, I'm watching the show just for this podcast. This episode was worse. It was like, like, no. and think about it. There's a planet hurtling towards the the planet they're on, and it's like, what are we doing here? You know, it's like we'll get into it later. But the whole train sequence is dumb. It's like I don't know. And I got a question about like what, some little time travel like stoppage going. I'm like, wait, does it, who has this power? You know, but mm. yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm not feeling the rainbow. That's all I'm going to say about that. Not feeling it. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Golly. Well, Mr. Richard, you, you seem excited and chuckling. Yes, uh, Dana, Free, Brittany, Abercrombie. Uh, this was a very <laughs> exciting uh, episode. So let me, let me just say this. Um, there was a lot of revelations in this episode because before I saw the episode, you know, I, I went online, which you're not supposed to do. And mm -hmm. I see a whole bunch of articles going up about a particular revelation in this episode. Mm -hmm. let, let me say right now, I don't I don't have an issue with that because now it's canon with the comics. But I do have an issue with this show um, because there's a lot of stuff oh. that happened in this episode that, uh, you know, obviously it was a shorter episode than the last two because I also saw how long the episode was. Yeah, thankfully. Um, and, and 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 there's only six episodes in the season, so I feel like there's a lot that that has to be explained still. 
I will say in terms of the positives though, the revelations are interesting. The fact that everybody is a variant is interesting. Mm -hmm. Although I want to see how you explain that in the next three episodes. But what I will say, um, and this is no offense to Marvel, no offense to anyone working on the show. This was the episode where I felt, you know what? I possibly will not watch every Marvel show that they release. It's just not it's as controversial. It's Dana, just you of, muted yourself. What? Yeah, yes, because it, it, it's, 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 it, and you know, I recall having a very good conversation about this with another friend on the podcast, Mr. Ricardo Negron, because I know that there is a such thing as being fatigued with all these shows. Yes. Uh, it doesn't mean that the show is horrible. It's just like it has to make sense for me from a standpoint as to why the show exists. Now, I understand that there is a larger focus about how this is going to impact phase four. Same with WandaVision, same with Captain America. But I don't think you need to make a show with every single character that especially in the case of Loki and also in the case of the Black Widow movie, which are two characters that are currently dead in the present. That's why I want to know why do we have to now go back and revisit these characters instead of other characters that are going to be important for phase four. But again, this is just my opinion. I I'm not trying to turn anyone on my side. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah there's a lot that happened in this, in, this, in this show. And I think to myself, well, with Loki already knows he's dead in the present. So I don't know how you're going to use this character moving forward when we already know what his fate is. So... We'll see what happens, though. <laughs> but it, it gives us an opportunity to have multiple different versions and endings to Loki. <laughs> That's true. Yes. The, 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 the interesting element is how it's going to impact the multiple, the, the multiverse stuff. And obviously how it impacts Spider-Man and WandaVision, uh, no, uh, Doctor Strange, et cetera. Yeah, that's interesting. But uh, I don't know. Something about this show, it just, it felt like this this episode was the buddy comedy where it's the two characters. They spend the whole entire time getting to know each other and stuff like that. And I, I'm fine with that, but I, it just it's hard to really explain uh, what my issues are with the show. But again, it, it's the revelations I thought were interesting. So mm -hmm. I, I do want to see where they're going with the next three episodes. I will say that much. So they have me on that. But after this show, I may need to take a break from these Marvel shows. <laughs> Yeah, I'm feeling the same way. Like, again, I was even hesitant to do this show. I was like, I don't know about this, but, um, you know, I, I love me some Dana. So I'm like, oh, I'll do this, you know, uh, yeah. but, but, you know, but it's like, yeah, this show is um, as boring as I thought it was going to be. It's not boring. <laughs> I, 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 I legit will say I enjoy doing any podcast with all of you. Yes. That that is the reason why I'm here. I enjoy the, these podcasts more than the actual episodes. This is but, this is uh, a fact. Yeah. And so that that's why I say yeah. I will always do podcasts, but watching certain shows, we'll see about that. Joey, I see you in the corner, very animated with your animated shirt. Yeah, hey, I'm I'm just listening to the opinions. I wasn't here the last two weeks, so. <laughs> I didn't know how everyone felt about the show, but I, I'm on board with Richard, where oh. it's like the first two episodes I enjoyed. They weren't great. I, I enjoyed them. But this episode, when it aired, I was just like, I don't need to watch this right now. I was just like, yeah, I'll watch it later. It wasn't like WandaVision or certain episodes of Falcon and Winter Soldier, where I'm like, oh, I need to, as soon as this hits, I need to watch it because it's going to be spoiled for me. And this here, I'm just like, all right. All right, what are we doing? So, yeah, I, I'm on the same boat, especially when they announced Phase 4 and the thousands of things they're going to do and all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm not on board with all this. Just give me Blade, Shang-Chi, Doctor Strange. I'm all right. Everyone else, that's fine. But in terms of Loki, similar to what Richard said, he is a character that is no longer alive. And... I enjoy his scenes with Owen Wilson because that's like the buddy cop. That's where, oh, this is funny. This is this. But you made this episode with these two characters that I kind of don't really give a damn about right now. And I'm just <laughs> like, all right, cool. Hey, do you know that he 
He, you know, he's by, you know, oh, that's great. That's amazing. I don't care. He, I'm not, not, to, not to be rude. I'm like, hey, I cool. What are we doing here? Like, I gotta say this real quick. Loki, I'm talking about like canon Loki, like from mythology, right? He once morphed into a female horse yeah. got fucked by another horse and was pregnant. So <laughs> See, that's, that's why they, they, they said that that's why I didn't really understand that part because I'm like he was always gender fluid and in the books and not the comic books, but there's a book where it says Loki God of Mischief that came out a couple years ago and I had to like drop kick a child in the throat in order to get the book. Yeah. But in that book He's gender fluid and bi and has relationships with everyone. I remember that that caused some controversy too when that book came out. I remember that. But yeah, yeah. No, I'm with Joey. Who, like, I'm sorry. And again, you know, <laughs> not trying to be an asshole. I don't give a shit. That, that literally, yeah. it, you know, it, I'm more, I'm more worries me is the goddamn boring ass story. <laughs> you no, know? but, but my not thing a throwaway is, line, you know? No, but, but again, the whole thing is that, again, we have six episodes here. The two episodes, they had a certain beat to it. Here it looks like everything just hit the brakes and we stopped. And it's like, okay, now we have two episodes to go. How are you gonna wrap all this up and make me care? Which is gonna good luck. That's gonna be hard. But mm. yeah, I'm just uh yeah, the next show, I don't know who they're gonna announce. Maybe maybe Korg or or, no. or, or Meek, maybe because I, I watch that. But other than that, I'm no. <laughs> okay, the, the next show coming up is Hawkeye. Which, when you oh, see Black Widow, what? Like, the next show, okay. So we have Black Widow, right? Mm -hmm. That's the movie that's gonna come up. July. Without any, in July, without mm -hmm. any spoilers, I can say that the next TV show is be Hawkeye. Which and Hawkeye? The Hawkeye TV series. No, no, no. That he's, the, the, you know, like Clint both. Martin or his daughter? Both. The, both. both. Oh, okay. He's gotcha. Ronan, yeah. he's Hawkeye, and you'll have his daughter. Okay. He, he, okay. And, he, and I'm I'm still not fully excited. Like they shot that downstairs in the train station from where I live, and I still oh. was like, "Wow." Okay. It, it has a connection. <laughs> I can't spoil. I'll tell you guys later. Yeah, well, but we'll it has a just connection to the yeah, 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 let's just yeah. focus on this, uh, Mr. Negron. Yes. So, um, yeah, as far as like this whole feeling of um, like they're being too much content that's the whole point like they're they're trying to fill as much content as possible so that's why you're getting all these characters that are supposed to be dead or whatever um you know and it's giving you something until like the next big movie or the next big series or something you know it they're treating it like a bunch of live action comic books you know much that same way all right what are you gonna, you gonna say something joy yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I think with that, um, I know the original schedule, Black Widow was already supposed to come out in between all this. Yes. So the reveal for, um, uh, I forgot her name in, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier was Elena. supposed to happen in Black Widow. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine. <laughs> but that's not, What's the, the, that's the reveal. Right? Yeah. That was the professor, the one who got um, yeah. Falcon number two, three, yeah. or whatever. Blonde Falcon. Captain America. Sorry. Yeah, they're, they're just yeah, milking this cow. Walker. Walker. Walker yeah. mm -hmm. So yeah. many characters mm -hmm. in this universe. Well, I was gonna mention also that <clears throat> the you know the um the whole train scene, that whole thing kind of reminded me of um the Hunger Games. I don't know if you guys like <laughs> oh, yeah. watch yeah. watch movies, but that whole thing of like class differences and a train taking the rich to the big, you know, to, to the big place, and in this case it's to go to the um to go to the uh, the rocket, but uh, I was just laughing at the very end because uh, you know Sylvie just walked off like I'm done with this shit. Like she just she, she she didn't have time to be shocked. She just like you know what <laughs> so, I think that's what uh, like that's what that's what um, Richard and Tony's reaction to this is like I'm done with <laughs> just walking away. Yeah right. Yeah that's what I want to do. <laughs> um, is it too early for me to speculate what I think will happen in the next episode, or are we going to get into that? We can get into that later. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into it later. All right, cool. <laughs> okay, so um, Romero. Yeah. So, oh, you done? Yeah, well, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, if I can, if I can relate to Richard, 
uh, the way the way he felt about this episode is the way I felt after watching the Flash episode when when they when they go Flashpoint. I'm like, what the hell's a point, man? And I just stopped watching. <laughs> um, as as far as this show, you know, obviously the first two episodes for me were better. This was the weak episode of of the three parts so far. Um, it was just dragged out for me, man. I you know. The whole the whole Sylvie and Loki thing was super dragged out. Mm -hmm. um, you guys were talking about how they did the whole uh, class thing with the rich and the poor. I thought I wasn't done that well. It's like it's like we're gonna use that trope where you know the rich are getting out, and I, I felt like they didn't really dive into that like with the people or anything mm -hmm. like that. So I don't know. I just I, I I understand the the whole overall topic going on with mcu fatigue especially with the tv shows and i do feel that as well um i i don't know i the best part of this episode was the last scene where it's like just because the way it was filmed and it was kind of suspenseful and stuff um i thought that was the best part of the episode um the rest of it it was just super dragged out as because they, they felt they felt the need to try to uh give you know obviously sylvie is a new character so they're just trying to say okay let's see who sylvie is so they they went through this whole diatribe of, of monologues just to see who these people are and in an, in a six episode short series it kind of feels like a lot like it doesn't feel as uh as natural to learn about this character because it's like okay so we have the first episode which is like what the hell's going on the second episode is like at, at the very end she's introduced and the next episode's like okay let's do a deep dive on what she's thinking and what, who she is and and also with loki we do kind of the same thing so it just felt forced for me uh, we didn't feel it, it didn't feel like we learned about her more naturally it's just like the train scene that's the whole point of that train scene it was just to to learn about them at the end it's like it was this huge ass mission and it's like okay so it failed because loki got drunk and uh, we got out. Oh, oh, well, okay. I'm about to die. And that's it, it, the motivations just didn't feel right for me throughout this whole episode. Well, there were a couple. See, I didn't hate it as much as you guys and Vietnamese like, hated it. I thought there were a couple of issues, such as you remember how they was walking around the town and it was that older woman who basically mm -hmm. gun blasted both of them. And then we never saw her again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that was just to kind of get a, a feel of the people in the town. I don't really know what the purpose of that was. I did kind of like how it was styled. It looked like something out of Cyberpunk 2077. So that they that? get a, a check. Yeah. You mean when, when, when the game works properly. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm still waiting to open that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you go. Yo, you know what's funny? You mentioned that because like when they were in the, you know, in the first town, I was like, oh, they're in Fallout right now. You know, it looked just yeah. like Fallout. Mm -hmm. And then at yeah. the end, I was like, yes, they're in Cyberpunk right now. Yeah. Yeah, my yeah, my fun, yeah. my biggest worry is exactly what you were describing with that woman when she blasted the two. That's my worry with Sylvie, where I'm just like, I don't want an entire episode that tells me about this lady and all this stuff if after this show she's not around again. Hmm. It's like I I just wasted my time learning about this lady right now if she's not going to be a part of the MCU, which right. could happen. It could, but you, Marvel has a weird way of just introducing characters and putting them into the family. We never yeah, know just, yeah, yeah. You, know, you know what this episode felt like to me? It felt like a like a low quality Star uh, Star Trek episode. It felt like Galaxy. <laughs> <Galaxy's laughs> like it just felt like it dragged on, and it's like, all right, well, let's just get to the end. Yeah, I was gonna oh, say it felt like a bad Who. Doctor Who episode. Yeah, that's that, that like too. To yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah, actually, no, it felt like a big budget Doctor Who episode with bad, with bad writing. You know, because like the <laughs> sets look cool. Doctor Who, I mean, that's one of the charms that looks cheesy and corny. Like this looked great, right? But yeah, the writing was just not there. Because again, I, I'm kind of with uh, a lot of you guys. Um, Sylvie, right? Don't give a fuck about her. Yeah. Like, oh. There's nothing oh. going, like I don't yeah. I don't care about this person. You know, oh. and it's funny because I was um by the way, I, I'll bring this up right now because I have the Marvel Unlimited app where you can read all the Marvel comics and stuff. Like mm -hmm. I, I thought that they were trying to throw me off, right? Because usually what they do is they have Marvel spotlights, right? You know, like um, and they're always related to whatever MCU thing is going on, right? So the first spotlight of the week was on um Ravona, right? 
Kang's girlfriend. I'm like, oh, 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 is that who this girl is? Is that mm -hmm. who Sylphie is? And then at the end of the week, after the Loki episode dropped, they had a spotlight on Sylphie. I didn't know that Sylphie was basically an Amara, you know, the real Enchantress fangirl. Like, that's basically what she is. She's just trying to be like her. So I'm like, we're following a fangirl around? That's what we're doing around here? <laughs> well, you know, you know kind of interesting. And, and it's not nothing to do with her acting or anything like that. I thought she just wasn't written well. I felt you know, we see we see the last episode. She's doing all of this crazy stuff. You know, she's going from dimension to dimension. She figures out that she like she can like hide herself in apocalypse and you know messes up the TVA and everything. She's almost there to the point where she's I guess with the time gods or some of the timekeepers or whatever. And then at the end of this episode, it's like like she jumps out of the train and she's like she sits on a rock and she's like, oh yeah. well. And that, I don't know why, that just killed it for me. I'm like, her character was so motivated, so focused. And it's like, like it, that switch, it's like, Agreed. It, it, it wasn't a switch where she felt defeat. It was a switch where she was like, huh? Yeah, I, I felt that with, um, like, with the second episode, especially at the end, she was very stern. She was on top of her game. She was on everything. Here in the train... And she's saying things like, oh, you know, I can't sleep here. The place is like this. And I don't trust you and stuff like that. I went to sleep two seconds oh, yeah. later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I'm just, um, wait a minute. What just happened? And she falls asleep. Like, I'm like, yeah, wait. You no, know, you're right about that. Like, she fell asleep while during this big ass party. You know, it's like, wait, <laughs> what? Like, I, I was, weird. but Carlos, I'm glad you said it because, yeah, that, that scene where they were just sitting on the rock, I bothered the hell out of me. I'm like, yeah, you're right. She was supposed to, be, she was like this forceful character, like, like, like unstoppable killing machine. And she's just like, eh. like, really? Yeah. <laughs> but see, I didn't have an, an issue with that because I, honest to God, thought that in order for Sophie, she realized that in order for them to get off of this planet, she has to play into Loki's games. And Loki, I honestly believe, still has the temp pad. That thing that was broken was not the real Tim Pack. Mm, could be. Okay, but well, so that's the thing is that if that wasn't the real thing, then why did they go through all that trouble to try yeah. to go to the rocket? Because uh, Loki is just that that way. Uh, I'm I'm with Ricardo on this one. Uh, <laughs> uh, something that's more funny there. So, can I go into my theory? Yeah, yeah, go for yeah. it, dude. Yeah. So my theory is that yes, that device is broken, and they feel like they're screwed. Um, Mobius was gonna find them and um, you know and, and take them back, you know. Like that's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take TVA to um find them and rescue them from this doomed planet because they're not gonna be able to get off of it themselves. Mm. Yeah, that's I mean, that works. Sense. and also yeah. kind of leading into that. Um, one of the big issues, there were three issues that we already touched upon him the being first? gender fluid. There were there were just oh, you, there were some categories. There was we touched upon the gender fluid. We understand now why they're the motion sickness, and they both have mommy issues. So they they both get motion sickness, which is why they both couldn't have their back towards the train. Um, also, on top of that, we learned that the timekeepers actually cre they didn't create the TVA. This isn't like you're born into it. They were stealing humans from whichever planet that they came upon to work in the TVA, and I'm going to assume any time that they figured out something was wrong, they would just reset them and create either another variant from that, um, which is why there is like a, when you look at Mobius, there's that kind of weird obsession with he, him on that jet ski in the 90s, and there's a lot of like 90s soda and the kablooey gums from the 90s. So these were just all stolen humans or creatures from whichever planets they came from. Um, also on top of that, there was a scene which I think was a bit weird. Was Remember when the rocket exploded and kind of the building collapsed and Loki went to stop it and usually you would just, you know, bring it back up. He kind of reversed because the rumble and everything reversed with it, which makes me con not concerned, but it, it makes me question, does he have the time stone? Or what's going on? Because when you he is able to, that's not his power. He can put it back up and to stop it, but he can't reverse time. Yeah, that I, I'm glad you said it because that bugged me. I'm like, who? Which one of them did that? Was it Loki? Was it the other girl? Or was somebody? Else? They just like, okay, we're gonna stop the building, reverse, and then go on a merry way. I'm like, no, you can't just brush that off. You know. Right. So yeah, no, I'm with you 100. That bugged me the most. I'm like, what? What is going on here? 
you know and again if loki had that power why didn't he do that before we've never seen this before never you know so yeah yeah I'm but, especially, i don't know how he was, if he's a variant does he pick up extra power i don't i don't know how to uh, who the hell knows well i mean especially with you know when he's doing the hand-to-hand -hand combat i'm like why didn't you just push him out of the way yeah you know like for your power i mean he pushed the freaking rocket out of the way so it's yeah those inconsistencies are kind of annoying yeah, so it kind of makes me question, is there someone else there? Is it Sylvie all along? And then there's the whole concept that I know Tara Strong, who plays Miss Menace, did an interview with um, Hollywood, or was it Hollywood Reporter? And basically she's stating that her character is a much larger character moving forward. Hmm. And that she, from my understanding, it came across as her saying that she's the one who's kind of in control of all of this. So we have the timekeepers. Remember the three lizards, apparently, the lizards that we've never seen and just a statue of. So we don't know if they really exist. And yeah. then we have Miss Minutes. And then we have the TVA, which are now we now know are the variants. And they don't know that they're variants. Um, so it could be some, like, like I was saying before, it could be some weird mind control cult what? thing. It just leads to my theory when I said that the, the time variants are evil people. Yeah. The timekeepers. They're the real villains. They're the they're the real villains well, of the story. Yeah, yeah I, I was wondering like uh <laughs> Ona Renslayer, whether she's in on this or if she's being manipulated by Miss Minutes or whoever it is that runs the uh the TVA. Like that's the thing I'm not sure yet, whether like She's in control, or, or or she's being manipulated the same way Mobius is being manip manipulated. I would like to think that she's in control. Mm. Yeah, some kind of tension and drama because there was a scene, and I think the first episode <clears throat> or so. Remember when they were going through all of the different, I guess, collections that she had in her office? Yeah, and she was like, "Oh, don't you remember this?" And he's like, "No." So yeah, like I, he goes into her, her office and it's like, oh, that's new and or whatever, and and because that could be like a different variant that doesn't remember that, you know. Right. That that's interesting. So yeah, any other theories that you guys may have? No, that's actually I never thought of that. This is actually the first time. See, because it's a good episode. Yeah, but it, 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 <laughs> but uh, thinking. Thinking along that, it, it's mostly just copying the same beats as WandaVision. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> so there's no originality here. We're just copying the same template. Well, well, MCU uses the same formula for yeah. a lot of stuff. So, I mean, in all fairness. So it's like, oh, hey, wow. if the bad guy was right there the whole time, I was like, here we go. I'm going to do this. Miss Minutes, Mr. Hours, Grandpa Days. <laughs> it's like, here we go. Guys are so mean. <laughs> no, no, I actually didn't think I actually didn't think of Miss Minutes at all. And that actually mm -hmm. makes things very interesting. I can pull up the quote here. So this is the full quote. So there's much more to be revealed. And you know, there it's fun to watch unfold. And the beautiful thing about this character is you don't really know who she is, where she's from, or what origin story is, how the sentient she is, if she has a horse in this race at all. What her intentions are, if any, if any good, exciting adventure, TV or film, you're left wondering that all the, all the time. She's an intriguing character, and that will continue. So, it's, uh, yeah. Can, can I make a quick comment? Mm -hmm. um, that's a good quote, but I will listen to absolutely nothing that these actors and actresses say <laughs> because I have <laughs> forgotten about one division. And the trolling, oh, of no. but it was yeah, the yeah, greatest yeah, yeah. troll ever. Yes, it was the greatest troll, but he was not the only one trolling because what happened to the uh, the, the the special astronaut, the person, the space engineer, the space no, engineer. You guys thought about that. Here's the thing: the problem with Wandavision is the fans came up with the theories. Disney and and Wandavision people never stated these are theories you should look out for. These are something you that should get you excited. Y'all guys came around with like Mephisto this and uh, Richard yeah. Reed that. So the only person to blame is all of you. I mean, no, okay, no, no, I, 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 I was calling bullshit on that for me. Like, is everything Mephisto now, bro? 
you know so that was all the fan you know that was that was just like the fans making up this whole kojima blue box uh, thing you know it's like yep. you're oh, just making shit up it, 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 nothing to, you know? to, to be fair on disney's part on a, in one of the wandavision posters there is a devil face uh oh yes. no one just does that for no reason there was a yeah. devil face in the church in the first episode of this one yeah Yep. That doesn't mean that does not mean Mephisto is like, hey, it was all me. Well, but but why be, would I put the, the face of the devil in a church? Because yeah. you're trying to ward off the wait. Where devil. else would you put the so face of the devil? Like that's where you put the devils. Like, hey, this is the motherfucker you want to stay away from. It's a water. It's a wanted sign for the church, you know. Yeah, exactly. We do controversy like, here. Yo, <laughs> don't don't listen to this guy. Beware. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. yeah, they're so yeah, it's all y'all fault. They're just giving you simple stories. Don't I, I, I don't know about you guys. The worst <laughs> the worst thing Marvel did for the MCU was with green light this show. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, nah, no. it wasn't that. It was it for me for me at least. This is a personal thing. Is is oh. the whole Evan Winners thing. The, Wait, who's making Evan them, yes. Yep. Wait, Ralph making him Ralph Potter. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Evan Peters. Yeah, oh, and, that, and, and, and that to me is is yeah. a perfect example, yeah. Carlos, of a ridiculous troll because we know yeah, that, was that this stupid. actor was in the X Men movies, and you and you and, and and Marvel is aware that people are wondering when are the X Men going to show up, yeah, in the MCU. So that that is a perfect example. No, but but saying. it's your fault. It's it's your no, fault. No, he's a variant. <laughs> no, he's a variant. If they never, he is a variant. <laughs> he's a variant. So there you go. God no. <laughs> but, but, but it, it, and what if the TBA is in the town of WandaVision? Oh, it could be. It, yeah. What if Wanda is is creating this? Could be her. Oh, oh she's got a lot of time on her hands. So yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> no, it could have been like remember when we when we watched WandaVision, how she created that bubble and then it went up into the the sky. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what's happening in that sky. Here, oh, God. well, here, here's the thing for me, and and this is an, another overarching thing with the M the MCU TV shows is when when they did that whole uh, rope a dope with with Evan Peters and Quicksilver, mm -hmm. at, when I first saw that, I'm like, these shows are gonna have a lot of freaking power, and it's like they're gonna introduce things like that are gonna be important for the overall universe, and and things that you need to pay attention to, and it's gonna be important. You know, mm -hmm. and when they did the whole rope up with Evan Peters and Quicksilver, I'm like, oh, this is the introduction of, of uh the X-Men into the MCU. Nope. 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 Yeah, yeah, it could still be because we we have until phase five. So I'm, it could I'm not, still be. So, so, I'm not so, holding to anything. Tony anymore. knows, man. You don't you don't say the <laughs> word X-Men near me. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you don't fake that stuff with me. You hurt my heart every time. <laughs> I saw Evan Peters. I was like, "Oh, let's go!" Yeah, yeah right. I, yeah, I was hyped. Like yeah, I, was, I, was, yeah. I didn't like that troll. I didn't like that troll. <laughs> mm -hmm. I felt like I was cheated on. Well, yeah, you know, like I thought. Okay, so Falcon and Winter Soldier—they're going to be important. Kind of really didn't. It's just their own standalone stuff. No, no, they become important. Well, they're 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 going to be in the movies, but nothing that happened narratively that happens in that show really. Actually, I have a question. No, you know, you're wrong because of the order. I have I have a question, uh -huh. especially with the last episode, uh, um, obviously leading into what the show is based on, where it, uh, you see the branching out of different timelines and stuff like that. Um, they have a show coming out called What If? Isn't mm -hmm. this technically What If? Technically. Yeah. That, uh, mm -hmm. I, I look forward to that show. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've heard that... Uh, Chadwick Boseman recorded audio for that show. Oh, nice. Uh, so we're going to hear him one more time. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, but that show, I guess, is coming up, I think, after this. It's like sometime in the summer, unless the schedule has changed. I thought it was in August, unless the schedule changed. That is summer. No, well, oh, well, no. You, 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 you definitely know better than me. because you know I, yeah. I, yeah. I kind of do. Yeah. I'm going to assume that it's August. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. coming this summer. It's going... So, any other final thoughts? Any other theories of what you think? Well, because we're fifty percent done with the show. We only have three more weeks. Well, I, I would like to just make a comment. Um, a controversial one? I, it, well, I, I don't really know if it's controversial. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I think everything I said controversial at the start of the show. But I do want to make. I do want to make a comment on something. Uh, the reason why I 
you know, was was a little disappointed in this show so far. It has a lot to do with a lot of the stuff that I heard about this show prior to it coming out. And then I know when we recorded the first episode and when Dana said, this is the most anticipated Marvel show. And right as soon as I heard that, I was like, no way, man, that can't be accurate. Because the thing is, yes, it's anticipated because people love the actor. The casting is good, yes. But to me, in my mind, there's no way this should be more anticipated than the, the, the Falcon and Winter Soldier show. Because at the end of Endgame, that was a big storyline when Sam got that shield and figuring out what's going to happen. How is he going to change into Captain America? So to me, I would think that would be a lot more anticipated because it has implications for Captain America 4, which is now confirmed. So that's why when I heard about that, that already set me down a bad path of what to think about the show. Then we saw the first episode, and while the episode was okay, it's like, like you said, Dana, they should have released the first and second episode at the same time. Because if you go into watching one episode and then you have to wait a week until a week later to see what happens next, sometimes that can be good. But if the first episode isn't really that compelling, then it's hard to get your attention back fully the following week, depending on what actually happens in the actual storyline. So uh, I just wanted to say, I'm not trashing the show to say it's horrible. There's a lot of people that like the show. So I, I, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. I'm just saying, yeah, it's, it, it may not be a show for me, but I want to see, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and see what happens in the next couple episodes because there's a lot left to explain in three episodes and they only have three episodes left. So I'm expecting heavy hitting things to happen from here on out. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> my my biggest fear for this for this show is that at the end, like a lot of it's not gonna matter. It's like uh -oh. it's just gonna be it's just gonna be like, okay, we're gonna diverge into these things. We're gonna introduce a character that is gonna show up in the MCU, but the story, like this story doesn't really have as much relevance. It just had to happen to introduce another character. And that's kind of what, what worries me. Yeah, I, I agree with Carlos that it's it's you know, like I, I went into it because I just like the Loki character and I'm just very interested to see what they do with him in, in like a, a short miniseries, but it's giving me the feel of like this series is nothing more than a footnote in the big picture. And that uh, and yeah, it's I like guess to introduce it's to introduce a character or two or whatever that will play some kind of role in the big picture later on but that's that's all it is uh, i i think that that puts um that puts disney in a in a tough spot um because i know for example you can't have i guess you you can't have a ton of hold on let me re, let me restart that you can't <laughs> risk having a ton of stuff that would move the franchise forward because you can't assume everyone who watches the movies yeah. is watching the show mm -hmm. So the only example I could give is like my brother who doesn't have time to watch these shows, but he'll watch all the movies. So I have to kind of explain to him like, oh, yeah, this happened and that happened and this happened. So he tried watching WandaVision. That didn't work. That didn't, that didn't work at all. But, <laughs> but but he's excited for Doctor Strange. So whatever comes out of this, it, it, it's very risky on Disney's part to, I guess, have a, a mega big revelation that would carry on to movies and just assume that everyone saw it months prior yeah no i i agree um they they are in that spot but that doesn't excuse like just boring storytelling yeah yeah you know what i'm saying like <laughs> you, you can still have a really compelling show that has really important things that happen within the show itself that are monumental within the show itself that have minor ripples here and there but nothing major because you're right you can't just assume everyone's going to watch this right um but at the same time i it, it just again I, I don't know how to say this without sounding like an asshole <laughs> it just feels like they didn't bother with this like oh we got tom hiddleston just throw some it, it, throw him in something and that's it it's like <laughs> uh, it's oh my god it's, it's just pedantic man it's like come on you, you you can't do something compelling with this like you could i've seen lower budget shows be more gripping than this shit you know, and we're just there with these characters I don't care about. You know, it's like, why are you wasting our time with this shit? You know, so that, that's how I'm feeling about it. 
No, what, what, what I will say for, for Dana, I did enjoy the first two episodes. Thank you. I really enjoyed the first two. Well, the second yeah. episode, I really enjoyed. It's just this one felt like they just hit the brakes and we stopped. And I, I heard people, um, <clears throat> I heard other people uh, were saying that they saw this episode as a filler episode, which I, I, I guess I can see that, their feeling of that. You, you can't really have a filler episode when your whole season is six episodes. Yeah. It's like no, it's but different. here's the thing. I understand what they're saying because it, it does feel like filler, but this see, this series feels like filler. So, like, does, does that even matter in the end? You know? So, I don't know, man. But but I agree. I'm like, why are we the whole... Here's the thing. We're on this planet the whole episode, and it ends on a cliffhanger. I'm like, come on, man. How much longer are we going to be in? Because I thought we're gonna be, it's... I thought we we're gonna be in this planet for ten minutes tops. Then we keep it moving. No, we're staying in this whole planet, having this extended long train sequence. All this, yeah. I'm like, oh come on, what what are we doing here? So I understand that, but at the same time, you said, Joey, it's like it, this is not filler. This is an actual legit yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so I have a, I have a question yeah. I want to ask Dana real fast. <laughs> Does it feel as though Chris Seeley is with us in spirit? <laughs> because I know, I know he, I know he would have a lot to say about this episode. Oh yeah, he I, would. I, I look forward to hearing what he has to say about it at, at, at the next time he's on the show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chris is with the, the in laws today, you know, so he couldn't be here with us. But yeah, I already gave him one like, Chris, get ready, bro, get ready, because uh, this ain't it. <laughs> so, so, so Joey, I I have something to say about what you mentioned about oh. the. The, the overall, you know, ha having the shows and, you know, catching up with the shows in order to yes. see the movies yes. and stuff. Every, every time I, Carlos has something to say to me, I get nervous. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so I do I do understand that. Um, I just thought that Disney would have the cojones to, like, actually make an important event out of their <laughs> at least one of their TV shows. Like, yeah. like that substantial. Like, Game of Thrones is an event. If Game yeah. of Thrones concludes and they make a movie after that, People will watch it and they won't think of twice about, well, like, well, the show's introduced what happened before. You know, people like if Loki was an event viewing uh, TV series, people wouldn't care about, you know, the, like being informed through a TV show because everyone yeah, would well, be talking about it. Well, the, the I mean, that example has been done before with Netflix, with their with Daredevil and all those other shows with the Defenders, where it still was in the MCU. But they're like, hey, you know. The Avengers, uh, Upper Manhattan, yeah, they're they're doing their thing over there. We have our own. <laughs> well, we, we, Sorry. that's our theme song. <laughs> so, so I think you know because Loki obviously is a, a huge character. Yeah. Not only is Loki a huge character, Loki, you know, Loki was a villain of the first Avengers movie. Yeah. That's yeah. how big he is. Yeah. He and it, and and his, and the actor is equally as popular. Because he's 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 in a lot of stuff. People love him. You know, girls fucking love this dude. So you know, it's a huge thing, and it's only six episodes. And I'm and I was just thinking like they could really make something. You know, di especially they're trying to sell Disney Plus and they're trying to sell subscriptions and and this app and this TV show. It's like if you make this like huge where people need to watch it. And it's like oh, this affects the MCU in a big way. It's like if you watch. Uh, Doctor Strange and the Multitude of Madness, or whatever the thing's called, uh, like you have to watch Loki, and, and it's like it's the precursor to that, and you know, it kind of blends in a little bit. And I think that would have been a good way, maybe not for an Avengers 4 or 5 or whatever the next Avengers is going to be, but you know, something <laughs> like with, an, with another movie. Because you know, at the end of the day, when people had to watch Avengers Endgame and Infinity War, there was a ton of movies that they had to catch up with. And and you know watching six episodes of a Loki show wouldn't have been as daunting as watching you know was it seventeen movies for Avengers yeah so mm -hmm. it, it is when the episodes are like this well yeah <laughs> I mean <laughs> but if you think about it this is like the equivalent of watching three movies though well, like, one episode you know, all yeah no not uh, one episode but like if you take the six hours you know two that's hours. three that's three movies. You know? Well, this is this has been this has been like two and a half hours. This three, yeah, three episodes, it's, yeah. which is like a movie and a half. <laughs> yeah, the, so the, just one end game, then you know. <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but the thing with that is, is just like with you know Loki appeared in the first store. He was the bad guy in in the first Avengers, which next yeah. year will be ten years. That's crazy. We've seen this guy for ten years, and it's like this. Not I'm not saying the show is terrible, but it's like you 
could do so much more. It could be more. more it right could be now. more. It could be more. It could be more mm-hmm. for sure. Well, then a guy that I've seen, like, it didn't, no, again, no offense. I didn't wait 10 years just to tell me he's gender fluid. I, yeah. That's fine. That's great. I don't want to know what he wants in his balance. Give me something here. Like, this yeah. just, it feels like, again, th- I, I feel like this is a prequel and the show hasn't started yet. It's like, what, what are we doing here? And, and then that's and that's my issue. It feels like let's give Benedict Cumberbatch a show because he's he, he's what is it? No, uh, what's you got name? the wrong guy, man. Um, um, Tom, Hiddleston. Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, 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 it's kind of similar. Uh, you know, they, let's give Tom Hiddleston his own show because you know he's popular. People watch and people subscribe instead of you know making this an event, making this people making this part a crucial part of the MCU. So and I, it still could be. I, I you know I'm kind of projecting here and I'm kind of predicting what's gonna happen, but something could big could happen. And yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I don't yeah. know, man. If they make it way through all these episodes just for something significant to happen, that's a bad deal, man. You know, <laughs> you know, that's like and I love yeah, by the way, that's I and I love this game myself personally, but that's like Final mm-hmm. Fantasy 13, bro. You're gonna make oh, me wait 30 hours for the game to get good. Come on, <laughs> Out of here. Dana, you're right, Dana. No, I'm, 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 I'm hurt. I feel. Say, say I your feel, piece, girl. Say your piece. No, here's the thing. I feel that this is important, and that it will translate into the movies that we later will see. Because for me, it seems like they will have to have. They will have in order for them to get off this planet. The planet can't be destroyed, which means that it creates another ripple or some kind of effect with the timeline, which ripples out to everything else because these people are supposed to be dead. And it's to show the consequences of what it's what happens when you don't follow that timeline. The reason why the Loki lady girl was able to hide was because she got high hid in um, apocalypses, and that right there is not going to happen. I also feel Sylvie is not the villain. TVA, yes, we know is the villain, but I also feel that there is something that is way bigger than that that is out there. We have the building that went in the reverse, and we don't know who did it. I don't think Sylvie did it, and we sure know that Loki can't do it. And remember, I believe that there's another variant that is out there that was a Loki that was trying to run around and kill everyone. The one that we saw, remember when we saw the TVA being killed when they were being burnt with actual oil? It was a very painful way to die. I don't think that was Sylvie. Hmm. Really? I don't think that Sylvie is that kind of person who will set the people on fire with the oil and watch them die. That seemed like something out of Seven. Well, he was just like, aha. <laughs> now, can I play devil's advocate with that? Yeah. Oh, don't hurt me. Oh, no, go ahead. I I'm go. with you, Joey. Let's go. So, <laughs> to, play <devil's, laughs> to play devil's advocate with what you just said, I, I as well don't believe Sylvie is the big bad guy and stuff like that. But you just wasted half the show telling me she is. Yep. No, they never said that she is. They assume that she is. Well, and she, even well, the show was telling you that. The show, the, the show was like, we're looking for this variant. This variant's yeah. right we're here. We're looking for this yeah, variant, yeah. but we don't know why we're looking for her. And it easily could have been the other variant that's framing Sylvie. There's a reason as to why Sylvie is trying to kill the TVA. Yeah. Well, she's trying. Yeah. She's not even not even the fact that she's trying to kill them. She's trying to stop them. She happens to kill them only because they're trying to kill her first. Every well, time when she hits someone with that reset thing and they blah, 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 it's because they're trying to poke her first. <laughs> well, it's important. It's important to mention also that that she said in this episode that she's in a mission. Yeah, I don't think that, I don't. She's not. She's not acting on her own uh, right. volition. Yeah, and years in the making. She said that this was like a ye- like this plan that's taken so, years. She says she said like Loki, your plan is just to sneak onto a train in disguise, but actual plans have steps, and so like that's why she's like comparing like her big plan is something that that has been planned for years. Um, we just don't know exactly what that is. So, so, so here's a question: Are we getting a flashback episode next week? Oh, no. oh, oh, please, no, God, no. no, God, please, you no, said, no. Yeah, it's the plan. It, we already got enough making... color, please. <laughs> well, 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 well to, to play devil's advocate again, when Loki spoke to Sylvie and was saying like, "Hey," when I was trying to distract them at that time when they found the body and stuff like that, she responded saying it was her. Who caused that event? It's her. I, I, have, yeah. no, I have no, no, um, like, um, compunction about it. That's her. Like that person we saw burning people. That was her. Like you yeah. can tell it was a woman anyway. <laughs> but, you know that's. But her. if it's not, we wasted three episodes. Yeah, I agree. I feel like I wasted three episodes. But go on. You know, it can actually be 
that's easily be a distraction so that the other variant out there can but actually- she admit it was her. To. She commented right. on that. No. Yes, she did. Uh, you can comment on something and not actually do it. That's a part of the, the, the Dana, point. Dana, come on now. Whoa, whoa, no. <laughs> don't. Because y'all, y'all are destroying my show, and it hurts my heart because I have. Is your things. show? You made it. It's my show. I made this. I sat down with Kevin Feige. We worked it out. There's a whiteboard somewhere. Uh oh. Well, I, yes. I I enjoyed the first two episodes a lot. Jesus. Yeah, and, and and we can have a positive outlook as to what could potentially happen next. Um, we'll see what happens. But, but they, they have they have a chance to redeem whatever negative feedback they've received. But uh, no, I, so, I, yeah. But one, one, one quick point I want to make, though. I do like what Carlos said earlier about there needs to be a big event. And I think that Marvel's response to what Carlos said is, well, with WandaVision, now we know by the end of WandaVision that Wanda is very aware that she's going down a dark path. And now she's potentially going to be the villain in the Doctor Strange movie. That's, um, that's how I'm sure they would respond to Carlos directly if he told them what he said on this podcast. And I think still, I agree with Carlos, there needs to be a bigger impact. So hopefully they are aware of that and they will make sure that these shows are going to have a, a much bigger impact moving forward. And, and, and then I'll tell, and then I'll tell Disney is like, yeah, Wanda, Wanda has been a bad person. This whole, this whole show, mm -hmm. the whole WandaVision since, since the inception of it, she indoctrinated people to be her slaves. Yeah, to do yeah. whatever she wanted them to do is she's a bad person. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care that she, <laughs> that, she that her boyfriend died because you know Thanos took her over and and you know she's a bad person. That's that's there's no ifs ands so, or buts. So, so what you're saying is Disney needs their own their own Snyder cut, their own oh. big event. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to mention so, it one time every episode. Sorry. <laughs> let's, let's have a so, five hour movie. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I do got to mention this, and Dana, I, I did like the first two episodes, yeah, just yeah. like Joey mentioned. He liked them too. I think Chris did. Uh, uh, Ricardo, did you like the first two episodes? <laughs> Tony did not. <laughs> I know Tony. 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 I don't even have to ask. Yeah, I mean, I I, I like the first two episodes. I, I think I like the second one better than the first. Yeah. Um, yeah. The third one, like I'll agree with you guys, kind of um, lagged behind the other two. I felt like the third one, like. No, I think it was. I think Tony mentioned earlier that like once they got onto um, once they got onto that planet, I didn't yeah. think they were gonna be on like the whole episode. Yeah, the whole episode. <laughs> that's that's my biggest issue with that whole thing because the first episode is obviously a setup episode to the world. It's like you're getting introduced to the world, to mm -hmm. back to Loki, to Mobius, and all of them. So it's like it's slow, but it's understandable because you're burly, you're indoctrinating to this new world where you, you've never seen before. The Yo. second one, it's like. I just gotta say, I, I love how the meteors only attacked at certain points. You know what I'm saying? Like when they first got to the planet, they were being bombarded and shit. And then when they had to do story shit, like the leaders laid off. The train was running perfectly fine. None of the meteors ever struck the train or killed the tracks or anything. And I'll then at the, the end, that. they come again. It's like, all right, bro. <laughs> Yeah, right. I mean that's, that's, ship. that's look at the ship at the very last second, right? As it's taking off. That's yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's that's I'm when not, it happens. I just had to I'm not gonna, go ahead. I'm not going to use that because every fucking show does that. Yeah, I know. But every, still, every it's like, with this show, it's just more aggravating, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, the second the second episode was good because it 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 built up. You know, it, it, it kind better. of picked up yeah. the pace. Mm -hmm. It's like it led to a, a crazy cliffhanger, and you're like, oh shit, what's going to happen? Where are they going? And this episode just freaking dropped, and it's like drop like a planet, son. Like, it was it was it was building up to something, and then it just took you like you you're thinking, oh wow, like this is chase, and the stakes are going to be really high, and then it just went down to like level zero, and you're like, hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Where are you from? You know, let's go drive right on this plane on this train. It's like for me, that sucked the life out of this show. Even though I enjoyed the first two a lot, this this episode kind of made me think. Wow, they they you know this six six episodes. There's only three left. Are, are, do we have one of these? Uh, do we have another episode three in the wings? It's like no. if it does, then <laughs> two, oh. then you know then then one third of the show is just going to be bad, and that's not good. That's okay. <laughs> episode four is going to be amazing, Carlos. No, I, we, have I, I telling, so. we have to keep telling ourselves that that is that's going to happen. No, wow. the, the, the second has to be amazing. <laughs> The second telling you. What, what worries me is that I think it was sometime this week where the creator Kate Heron, she tweeted like, "Oh yes, we we finally finished the whole show." I'm like, 
Just, just now? <laughs> No. Just, like editing and everything. I, I hope that was just a special effect that we're adding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know everything. Saying? Editing and everything. <laughs> I'm like, now? Okay, yeah. we could make some changes. Call me. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. My boy, you know. I'm telling you, uh, MCU fans are like WWE fans where the theories are always more interesting than what you actually get. <laughs> and you're just waiting for that payoff. You're waiting for like, oh, this episode sucked, but the next one is going to be better. They're definitely building up towards something, and it ends oh. up not happening, or they don't explain it. And it's like, well, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, what, what's very weird, I know with this episode, and, and I remember I had to I had to watch the, the last part twice because I remember um, right when they were doing that, that long one take where they were running and everything was – they're mm. fighting mm. and pushing everything to the side, and then the stuff broke. For a moment, I was just like, "What are we doing here?" Because I, I I missed that part. I rewind it again, and I, and then it just ends, and I'm like, "What? What? What?" I was <laughs> so, trying to figure out why those security guard guys were fighting. Them. Yeah, why? Like, that didn't make any sense. The whole planet is being destroyed. Like, oh, we're gonna fight you. Like, why, dude? If I was a security guard, I'd be like, "I'm dipping, bro." Yeah, we're done. We're done here. Well, I mean, if you, if you guys if you guys noticed, like they were fighting them, then the ship is destroyed, and then they give up. Yeah. It's like the, the ship was going to take off without them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is true. Like, you all were dead regardless. Yeah, like, I don't know, <laughs> like whether the ship exploded or not. You all were dead, so I don't understand like what how that changed anything. It was weird. Man, I'm getting <laughs> really upset just hearing all this shit, man. Like, I, <laughs> don't you know, me. Oh, God. Anyway, it, it, that last whole part reminded me of one big like Spy Kids moment where it was all it was all green screen and they were just running from nothing. Wow! Yeah, the special effects yeah. looked nice though. It was cute. It was cute. Cute. I thought it was. It was I thought it looked good. It was good. It was good. We still we still have a no uh, uh, an entire second half. It could be amazing. Yeah, it could be. I hope so. We'll see about that. I'm sure they'll do it. Well, I will say it is better than WWE, though, to respond yeah. to uh, Rich's <laughs> comment earlier. Rich. Show is garbage now. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about WWE is garbage. It's yeah. garbage now. So, yeah. <laughs> Guys are just I just want Owen Wilson back. Yes. Yeah. I I like Mobius in this show. Mobius? I think Mobius will be back. The thing is that we have look, to look forward to. We have... The variants discovering that they're variants, so Mobius actually coming to the realization of what is really happening. So maybe mm -hmm. we'll have like a threesome team up right there with them trying to fight the TVA. Uh, we don't know what's going on. What's their name? Raven Slayer? Ra Ravina? Ravona? Mm -hmm. The one that Google plays. R Ravona, right? Yeah, Ravona. Yeah, so Ravona. we have Ravona, who I believe is probably <laughs> in charge of all of this as well. And we have Miss Minutes who is going to have probably a much, much larger part who can play some kind of form of something that will be against all of them. And then what happens with the rest of the variants when they discover their variants as well? So everything that they knew was a lie. Sylvie could probably restore all their memories, uh, maybe. Because yeah. remember how she went into the Sasha Lane and she was like, it's real, it's real. So... That that reveal in this episode was the best thing I liked about this episode. So yeah, because even though it that. started with the flashback, and then when he when Loki questioned him, and he was like, "Wait a minute, what did you just say?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, I never thought of that." And I'm like, "Whoa!" I was like, "Wow, yeah, yeah." And then, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah, the big the big TVA reveal was the thing that stood out to me in that that whole episode. Yeah, that was significant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, th that's yeah because that's something that happened in this episode where you're like, okay, this can keep the story going. Yeah, uh, you know, because you after after the the whole planet scene kind of felt like Canto Bite-ish for me. Um, yeah, like, it's like you know, like what is this going to lead to? Like, you have no clue. Are they just going to survive, and that's the point of this? Yeah, you know, we're like, I don't know. Sorry, Dana. <laughs> no, no, he, he's just being mean. And it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have to be true to ourselves. We can't. We're not, here to, we're not here to play a nice Swiss show, you know. I feel as though oh like God. the episode was maybe built up to build like the chemistry between uh, Loki and Sylvie because they're gonna have to work together mm -hmm. for the latter half of the of the yeah. of the um, the series. Like you, you, you know, they were 
you know, they were antagonists towards one to one, one each other. Um, you know, end of the second episode, mm-hmm. beginning of the third episode, but then they got into a, you know, a desperate situation where they needed to work together to survive. And then even like on the train, you start to see them start to warm up to each other. It seems like once they go into their whole like life stories and what have you. So that's building them up as like a reluctant pair um, that has to work together. And, and like, you know, as you mentioned, like Mobius is going to be added to that and they're going to work together against the TVA. Um, that's what that's building up towards. So like this was like, so like, well, like on the surface, it's like you got this long filler episode on this planet that we don't give a crap about because it's going to explode at any moment. But it's really just like, here's these two characters. Here's where they're similar. Here's where they're different. They got to work together. Here's some new information towards the end of the episode that's really important towards how the rest of the series plays out, which is that the TVA people are all variants. And now we're going to see where it goes from there. So that's, I mean, it took them a while to get to that, but it got a, it got us there and hopefully we'll get something better in the next episode. Well, you know what's interesting? You know, you know, you mentioned that it's like, it took a while to get there, but I felt it didn't take enough. You know, they're, they're trying to make the transition from Sylvie. First of all, Sylvie's a Loki, is what they're trying to say. And then she's a bad guy. And then we're going from bad guy to reluctantly teaming up with someone to, you know, becoming sort of allies. And it felt like we didn't really get much of, you know, Sylvie kind of manipulating or, or you know, tricking or, or you know, besting the other opponent in order to get the payoff of the team up stuff. You know, we got, we got the rocks con or was it rocks con the part the, the hurricane in Alabama. It's like, mm-hmm. like we got that part, which was a couple of minutes. And then we got the, a, a small part of the beginning of when they go to the TVA. Uh, and that was enough for them. Like that was in, enough interaction between the Lokis or Sylvie and Loki in order for us to be like, okay, so now they have tension. But for me, it's like it wasn't enough tension between them in order to get the payoff of them sitting in a train for 20 hours talking about, you know, the olden days. It didn't really pay off for me. Mm. I mean, I thought I thought it was kind of interesting that, like, you had them, like, finding that lady in the trailer who had that, like, air gun or whatever that thing is. Mm-hmm. And Loki was trying to warn Sylvie, like, you got to go in there with a little bit more finesse. You can't just barge in. You know, she tries to barge in and gets blown away and Loki's like, okay, watch me do my thing. And then his way doesn't work either. So it, it was just kind of one of those things where they have those two different characters have two different methods, but they both, you know, fell short on what they were trying to accomplish. And then you have, um, you know, the whole plan was trying to sneak into the train and it almost didn't work except Sylvia at the last second, you know, grabbed hold of one of the security guards and manipulate him to say like, oh yeah, they can go through. Um, so you already had that there, like them like having to work together. Mm-hmm. They were starting to build up, build up to that. And you know, even going into the train, they didn't trust each other. But once they started talking, it, it, it seemed to both kind of mellow out a bit. Um, but then again, Sylvie wakes up and there's Loki drunk and jeopardizing the whole plot. And it ends up in a big fight, and they're outside the train, and the device is destroyed, and it's all chaos. So, like, it's almost like everything almost went back into full circle. Where, like, oh, we hate each other now because this whole thing is ruined and we're doomed. Um, but then they have to figure out again okay, now we got to go to this rocket and, uh, you know, try to try to survive. And so, Rich, it wasn't even the rocket, it was a rock. <laughs> All they had to do was get to the rock, and then that's where they made up. <laughs> and now they went to the rocket. Yeah. yeah. I, I also want to point out that Loki was drunk, was thrown out of a train, and then right after was no longer drunk. Just yes. want to throw that out there. To be fair, that shit will sober you up. <laughs> to be fair, you know? If it doesn't kill you first, it'll sober you up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, that seems kind of to be our general thoughts on the episode. I'm still burning a candle for it and thinks that it's going to be much bigger than what everyone's saying and that we'll get back to Ralph Bonner. It was all what what, what if Mobius is the bad guy? 
Oh, well, that's, well, that's, no. another, that's another. No. No. Whoa! I, I, I can't be the. I can't Whoa. be the, the bad guy. <laughs> that would be a crazy <laughs> twist. That would be yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, see, and that makes for a more enjoyable show. So think of that, and then yeah, you can watch it but, quickly. But I thought of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Disney didn't do that. Yeah. Yep. We're only in the third episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you never know. But uh, that seems to be our thoughts on the uh, third episode, Lamentus as a whole. Um, anyone has anything they want to promote, Mister Tony Polanco? Yes, uh, as always, thank you for having me on. Like I said, this is the best part of enduring this show. It's like, you know, I'm watching, I'm like, bro, why am I doing this? And I think, oh yeah, because I can hang out with all these lovely people. It's always a blast. So thank you for having me on. Uh, if you want to check me out on Twitter, I am Ramudeth, R-O-M-U-D-T-H, and my bio, there's links to all the places I write for, PC Mag, Laptop Mag, and I'm also the host of Throwdown, which I do with Carlos and Chris, and you know all these other guys every Thursday and Sunday at ten thirty p.m. Eastern. We go live on okay. Twitch and we upload stuff to YouTube and Audio Boom everywhere. We are everywhere. Throwdown show. Mister Richard Bailey Jr. Oh yes, thanks for having me back on the show. You know, last weekend was Father's Day weekend, so my father and brother were in town. That's why I wasn't able to make the show, but it was a good weekend. Um, and yeah, it was great to be back on the show. I look forward to our next podcast and uh, a lot more things coming to the coalition very soon. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Negron? I don't have much other than like, you know, thanks everyone for uh, tuning in to our podcast. Definitely check out the website, thecoalition.com. That's with the K. Um, check out all our neat podcasts, all our articles. Um, and yeah, and this is... Uh, I'm, I'm with you guys. Like this is the best part of watching Loki is being able to discuss it with you guys. So uh, that's that's why I'm going to continue. So, yeah, sounds fun. Polanco Junior. <laughs> I only have my Twitter, which is under the under the bar down there, right there. Uh, yeah, so you can just follow me on Twitter, and then hopefully I don't get kicked off of the show for some comments. But yeah. Uh oh. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. No, well, if the next episode's worse, we'll see. (laughs) There'll be some more controversial Um, comments. (laughs) Mr. George A. Romero. Uh oh. (laughs) That's my uncle. Uh, um, (laughs) What Tony said, make sure to tune into a throwdown show. Check it out on Twitter, on Twitch, on YouTube. Uh, We also have a Discord where we talk a lot about games and other stuff when you can actually ask us questions for our Throw Down Your Questions show. So any gaming-related questions you can ask there. Uh, Yeah, I'm at Eurocar9. Uh, If you're unhappy with my my particular opinions (laughs) of this episode, uh, make sure to ask someone else. Whoa. Whoa. Goodness, salty. Um, so thank you. Um, once again, I am Dana over at the coalition. Uh, we had interviews with Black Widow coming up fast nine. This dropped. We have Wolfgang Puck, also part of the Disney Plus documentary series. That interview is up on the site as well. We have more MCU that's coming and more Disney overall that is coming. But yeah, stay tuned for Black Widow because I can't do fast nine and Black Widow in the same week. It's too much. Mm. So yeah, we have that coming up as well. So Femini. So thank you once again for joining us, uh, listening to us, and we'll be back next Saturday again to talk about the greatest episode ever, episode four. <laughs> yeah. Hey Dana, we, hopefully, hopefully this is the this episode three is the equivalent of the university episode in Invincible. It only went up from there. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> this could this could have the same potential, hopefully. So, yes, hopefully. (laughs) So, thank you, everyone, for listening. Have a great day, morning, evening, afternoon, night. Peace.